There were certain times in the scriptures where God caused men to do things that he wanted done, and yet they entered into these things not knowing uh, completely what they were doing, but they entered into it willingly and did things of their own will that were much greater than they had knowledge of. Uh, one of these things, actually this happened twice, is when Jesus was uh, anointed with uh, spikenard, with very costly ointment, a, a very strong smelling perfume. This happened uh, once early, earlier in his earthly ministry. We're not going to deal with that so much. But then it happened again from a different sister um, just a few days before his death. So we want to remember these things as we remember the Lord's death here at this table. <clears throat> in the case of Mary, here this is uh, found in Matthew and uh, Matthew 26, Mark 14, and John 12. I'll read from John. Six days before the Passover came, G then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then Mary took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying hath she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me ye have not always. <clears throat> Now, in Matthew's account, which is Matthew chapter 26, it says that she poured it on his head. And also, I believe in Mark's account, yes, in Mark's account, chapter 14, she, it says she poured it on his head. So, we put these together and see that she poured it on his feet and his head, both. Mm -hmm. And you, re, you heard here in the account how that the, the odor filled the house. So, this was a, a strong odor. And I, I, all the scriptures don't say this, but... I would not doubt that this aroma stayed with him literally unto his death. That's what he said, right? She's done this for my burial. Well, it wouldn't make any sense for him to say that if you couldn't still smell it on him when he was buried. So I wonder if Jesus did actually still smell of this ointment even throughout the trial. Here, here's the Son of God, even even literally smelling good at his trial while men rejected him and while he was being scourged and while he hung on the cross. And you can see the pictures here in the Levitical priesthood where God, God commanded a sweet-smelling savor always be lifted up to him, in particular in the sacrifice. It was a sweet smell to God. So I, again, I know the scriptures don't say this, but I, I can see how this could be where li literally Jesus still smelled of this wonderful aroma as he offered himself to God for our sins. <clears throat> now his anointing was obvious, and after his death, when the other women came to anoint his body, this is, remember, after the Sabbath day, they couldn't do this on the Sabbath, but after that, they came to anoint Jesus' body. Well, of course, he had already risen from the dead. And so God, knowing that this is the way it would be, had his body anointed before. <clears throat> it was customary to anoint the body after death to prevent decay and to prevent the unpleasant odor, but Jesus was anointed before his death. In view of the fact that Jesus' body did not decay after he died, 
This anointing might seem superfluous, but it was not. Other men had perfume applied to their bodies after their death in, attempt, in an attempt to mask the effects of the curse. But perfume was applied to Jesus' head and feet before his death in the absence of any curse for his burial. So this anointing made him smell sweet to God, but they also made him smell sweet before men, signifying God's approval of him. The intention of Mary and the purpose of God in this anointing appeared to be the very same purpose for his death, for his burial. As Jesus stated this to his disciples, she hath done this for my burial, and, and Mary didn't object. She didn't say, no, that's not what I meant by this. So should ordinary men have their sinful and corrupt bodies anointed, but not the only begotten Son of God, who knew neither sin nor corruption? The Father determined that the anointing of Jesus would be made known to men before his death. <clears throat> kind of like the visible appearance of a dove. There's the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove and resting on Jesus in the same way this costly, sweet perfume marked Jesus as the one sent of God to take away the sins of the world. The anointing that Jesus received of this woman was just one more way in which Jesus' death would be most unusual. The reason for Jesus' death was unusual in that it was for the sins of the world. The cause of his death was unusual in that he sacrificed himself Unlike the rest of men who die as the result of the curse of sin, Jesus' death was unusual because he died and gave himself to be cursed. He laid down his life for a purpose. Amen. Jesus' body was a special body prepared for the bearing of sins, though he had no sins of his own. So certainly, this body should be prepared before his death. And Mary was used for this purpose. We think of all these extraordinary things associated with the death of Jesus, and we must agree with Mary. Wherever the gospel is preached, it's remembered what she did for him on this night, at this supper. And we enter into fellowship with her, agreeing that it was good and it was right for Mary to anoint him with this precious ointment, this very costly perfume. He is precious to us too, and the remembrance of his death is precious to all the saints. Amen. There was no better way for her to spend that costly ointment. And Jesus said, in the text we read in John, against the day of my burying hath she kept this. I get the impression that she actually purchased this ointment ahead of time fully intending to use it when Jesus died, and she just couldn't wait any longer. She wanted to bless the Lord while he yet lived. And see, she entered into this with, this is what she wanted to do, but, but this is what God wanted her to do too. Amen. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Each time we gather at this table, we must consider that one so great and holy so wise, so powerful, yet so merciful and full of truth and grace should humble himself and sacrifice himself, laying aside his great glory for us and doing this while we were yet sinners and in sin, alienated from God, dead in trespasses and sins, you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. So when we meditate upon Jesus' great love for us, then his sweet scent fills us again. Let us remember his death and give thanks. 